Hi, Wildcat artists. It's Mrs. Finglin here. And as you notice, I have a couple special guests today. First is my daughter, Lucy, over here. Hi. And she is in fourth grade. So she's going to be helping me with this project. If you're younger than fourth grade or older than fourth grade, you can still do this project. It's for everyone. And then you'll notice a new family member <laughs> that I haven't gotten to tell you guys about because we got her after um, or right before Thanksgiving break. And this is our new dog, Sunny. Sunny, can you say hi? <laughs> um, Sunny is actually going to be the inspiration for our subject matter today in our artwork. So we are going to be doing dogs or cats or whatever pet you may have at home. Or if you don't have a pet, you get to pick what pet you would choose. If you love dogs or if you love cats, um, you can choose um, one of those. Okay. So materials you will need today. Sunny, what do we need? We need some paper, okay? You can use um, any type of paper. I'm just gonna be using like a nine by 12 sheet of paper. If you have your sketchbook and you wanna use that, you can use that. Um, you will need a pencil to draw with first. And then Lucy, we'll what do you got over there? Sharpie. A Sharpie, we're gonna use a Sharpie to outline right here. Why don't you look over here? There you go. We're going to use a Sharpie <laughs> to outline um, our work before we start painting. And we're going to paint. So we're going to use watercolors. Yeah. And we're going to um, paint with watercolors. Now, if you don't have watercolors at home, you can use markers, crayons, colored pencils, whatever materials you have on hand. Okay. So first we're gonna learn about an artist who also used dogs in his artwork. And we're gonna let Sunny go for a second here. <laughs> there you go, and she'll come back later. So let me share my screen with you and tell you about this special artist named George Rodrigue. All right, I'm gonna press play on this. We're not gonna watch the whole thing, but I wanna show you a little bit about him and then um, some of his artwork. Today, we're going to talk about George Rodrigue. George Rodrigue was born and raised in Cajun country, Louisiana, located in the United States. George Rodrigue lived from 1944 and recently passed away in 2013. George Rodrigue portrayed on his canvas his dying heritage. This included his land, the people, the traditions, and the mythology. He felt that with a progressive world, it was very important to preserve his traditional heritage. George Rodrigue created his early 1990s Blue Dog series based on the French Cajun Loup Garou legend. It captured him worldwide fame and his Blue Dog series became modern masterpieces. As a passionate philanthropist, Rodrigue founded the George Rodrigue Foundation of the Arts advocating the importance of the arts in education. Programs include art supplies for schools, scholarships, and arts integration programs throughout Louisiana. George Rodrigue, known for his Blue Dog series, was inspired by the myths of the Loup Garou. He painted a Cajun ghost story that was based on a werewolf type dog. This werewolf dog often was a story he heard as a boy. He had no image for the loop guru other than what he imagined in his mind. So in order to find a suitable shape to develop his blue dog, he found in his photos from his studio dog, Tiffany. Tiffany had passed away several years prior and he used photographs of the way she stood, sat, and manipulated her shape to meet the needs for his painting. All right, so as you can see, it started off as this painting of this blue dog that from a picture of his own dog that he had had when he was younger. And he was depicting a legend in his culture, in his Louisiana culture called the Loop Guru. After um, he painted this dog, she became so famous that he started to use her in other um, ways and paint different scenes around her and just focus on how he could make this blue dog um, in different ways. So it wasn't always about the legend anymore. He started putting different clothes on her, backgrounds on the dog, um, and all sorts of different scenes. So for our artwork, we're going to do something similar. Okay, so you can see 
Here's a Mardi Gras dog. The blue dog's on the beach. Blue dog's wearing a tie and has colored background. Blue dog's, you know, going on a trip here. So all sorts of different things. Oh, blue dog's riding a motorcycle. I will share this video with you in case you want to see more of how George Rodrigue painted his blue dog. Okay. I like the sunglasses one. So um, another thing I want to show you is um, the resources we'll be using to draw our cats or dogs. And remember, if you want to draw a different animal, you can certainly look up a different animal, but um, the resources I'm going to share with you are for either a dog or a cat, okay? All right, so let's take a look at those. For this guide, I will be sharing with you the guide to drawing different dogs. And there might not be your exact breed on here, but there's tons of different images and breeds. So you can kind of look and see which one might look like your dog, or if you don't have a dog, your favorite type of dog. So you can um, look at these pictures to draw from. Now this also offers you some simple steps um, of how to draw a dog sitting up. And then you would just change the face depending on which dog you chose. So you can follow those steps and draw a dog sitting up. This one has different poses. So kind of shaking, doing downward dog, sitting, um, wagging its tail, laying down, and then some different types of dogs. Lucy thought this one looks like Sunny because she curls up in a little ball when she sleeps like that. <laughs> so if you wanted to draw your dog in a pose, you could, or you could just draw the dog face. So here are the different breeds and their faces, and you can just kind of zoom in. You do not have to draw the whole body of your dog or cat, okay? So there's all these different breeds that you can choose from, and I'm gonna let you use this resource um, to draw from. They're real simple drawings. They're made by an art teacher um, and hopefully they can just give you some inspiration of a dog you might want to draw or a cat you might want to draw. Okay, so they're real simple line drawings. Remember, we always break things down into shapes and lines. Um, I'll show you mine in a second. And the cat one, in case you're a cat lover or you have a cat at home that you want to draw, is similar, it's just all different cats, okay? So you can choose whether you wanna draw a dog or a cat, and then which type of dog or cat looks like yours or looks like one you would love to have, or if you just, you know, you can't have dogs in your house or cats in your house, but you love this certain type, you can pick up that certain type, okay? So those are your resources that you will be using to draw from, and what we will be doing on our paper, we're going to pick our pose um, or our dog or cat that we're going to do. And we're going to just fill the page mostly with that animal. Remember, we can draw it big and just draw the face and a little bit of its neck. Um, or you can draw the whole top to bottom, the whole um, dog or cat. Okay, if you want to draw a lying down dog or cat, or a standing one, um, you might wanna hold your paper short man and go horizontal because um, it's gonna be longer this way. Whereas you're drawing a dog that's sitting or just its face, you'll wanna hold it tall man, okay? All right, so I'm going to share my paper with you. Let me get my screen going, okay? And so what we're going to do now, here's a pencil for you, Liz. Thank you. We're going to start drawing our dog, okay? We are gonna be choosing the golden retriever since our dog Sunny is a golden retriever and we're gonna be drawing that one from the resource. All right, so for ours, um, I'm gonna be drawing just the face of the golden retriever, um, kind of like this little one, except I'm gonna make it big and fill the page. Lucy's gonna be drawing the little laying down one, except she's gonna draw it bigger and fill the page. So just look at what picture you might wanna draw and then start, okay? So for Lucy, you're gonna start kind of as close to this edge as possible and try and get it as close to this edge as possible. Cool. For mine, I'm gonna start up here. You can go ahead and start. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna start with just that top of the head like it shows you in the um, handouts. 
And then you really have to choose which one you're going to work on and then work on it according to the picture and the um, resource that I gave you. Because unless you're doing the exact same one as me, which you probably might not be doing, um, I want you guys to be able to choose the type of dog or cat that you want to draw. Um, you're going to want to look at the resources rather than my drawing. So we're going to take some time and draw. You guys take some time and draw and then meet us back here. All right, so we finished up our drawings and we are outlining them now. I have outlined mine and Lucy's going to go ahead and outline hers. And then I'm going to take an eraser and just erase pencil lines that I don't need anymore. And before you outline, if you wanted to add anything onto your dog or cat, like a tie, a hat, um, sunglasses, or anything like that, you certainly can put that on um, your dog or your cat. I think we're just going to make some fun backgrounds for ours. Um, I might put a little bow tie or something on my dog here because I've got the space to. But some of you might need to do that before you outline, depending on what you draw, because you might have to erase some lines that you don't want to Sharpie um, and get in the way if you're putting a hat on or something like that. So if you want to put a hat or a tie or any of those other things you saw um, in our George Rodriguez video, you can certainly do that. Um, sunglasses and anything like that. Okay, so let me show you a couple of ideas in case you forgot. This one had sunglasses. Um, let's see, this one had a tie on. This one had butterflies around its neck, a heart on its chest. This one had cowboy boots and a hat on. Um, this one had a doctor's a uh, lab coat on with a stethoscope. Um, here's some with hats and vests and little shirts and little collars. You could put a collar on. This one had a cape on and a crown on um, up there. So all different ideas if you want to add a little fun and whimsy to your cat or dog. If it's, you know, your cat or dog's birthday or you just want to um, decorate with a little fun, you can put that on your cat or dog. Okay. All right. Before I go on to our painting part, I do want to show you if you're struggling with drawing your cat or dog, um, remember if you're looking at a picture and you say, okay, I want to draw this guy. Remember to break it down. Don't try and draw the whole thing all at once. I started with the top of the head and then did the ears and then maybe the body and then went inside um, and did the face. If you look up at um, up here, she starts with the ears at the top of the head and then the side of the face and then the inside. I know it's so fun to draw their cute little eyes and noses and mouths first, but you really need to know the shape of the head and where the eyes and nose and mouth should go first. So remember to practice and it took Lucy and I a while to get ours the way um, we wanted them to look. So don't get discouraged and make sure that you're just practicing and um, looking for those simple lines and shapes and breaking it down um, for yourself, okay? All right, so here's mine all sharpied. Lucy, you've got yours all sharpied. She did her laying down one. And now if we wanted to add some hats or things like that, I think I might add, um, I'm going to do it with pencil first. I'm going to add a little collar because <laughs> I've got an, a lot of room here um, to her neck. And maybe I'll put a tag coming down. And since our dog's name is Sunny, maybe I'll make it um, a sunshine tag with a little sun burst on it. Okay. And I wanted to do it in pencil first, just in case I made any mistakes, which I did, which is fine. And then I'd outline that too. 
Okay. So here's your choice where you get to choose um, whether or not you're going to do realistic colors um, that are actually in your dog or cat, or if you want to kind of do like George Rodriguez did and do imaginary colors like blue dog. Um, it doesn't have to be blue. It could be your favorite color um, or maybe the color of your dog's collar or your cat's collar or whatever color you want. Okay, so you get to really choose on if you're going to do realistic colors for this part um, and either paint or color your dog um, or cat or if you're going to do all sorts of um, imaginary colors. For your background, you can do a pattern in the background. I think um, that Lucy and I are going to do patterns in our background. So it can be something simple as polka dots, stripes, wavy lines. Um, it could be something that goes with your cat or dog's name. If you have a specific name um, for your pet, you could do like for sons, I could do sons in the background. Um, so you can do whatever you want for your background. You can just color it all one color. We're going to do patterns in ours um, and we're going to paint. I'm going to paint um, my dog probably a more imaginary color and then do a pattern in the background. Okay, so pick what materials you want to use. Choose your pattern or a plain background and then choose real or imaginary colors and start getting to work. Okay, so we're gonna be painting ours. Remember, if you're using watercolors that you want to take a break between after you paint the dog and let it dry and then take a break before you do the background because otherwise the colors will bleed together. Lucy's using more realistic colors for her sunny dog. Um, I'm gonna do more just a bright yellow, so more imaginary colors. And Lucy actually gave me the idea for my background. I'm gonna do a pattern of clouds and um, blue sky with white clouds for my background. So remember if you're painting or coloring, whatever you're choosing, um, try to go in one direction, uh, especially with your coloring and your crayons or markers or colored pencils. Try and kind of keep an even pressure and uh, color in one direction so you have nice and awesome coloring. And if you're painting, you do kind of want to make sure you're painting kind of in one direction. If you're mixing paint colors, it's kind of a little trickier to do. But keep that in mind when you're painting. If you're using watercolor paints like we are, Remember, any time you want to switch colors, you have to let the other area dry. Otherwise, those colors will mix together, um, even if you don't want them to. Okay. And I do recommend if you have watercolors at home um, and you want to paint, if you used your sketchbook paper for this, you might want to trace your drawing onto a more um, water waterproof kind of tougher paper for it. So if you're like, oh, I put it in my sketchbook, but now I want to paint it, um, you can just simply trace it onto a thicker piece of paper that would stand up to watercolor. And then you'd have two. And you could color one with uh, watercolors or one with markers and kind of see. Now, if you like the look of watercolors, but you don't have them at home and you have markers, Remember that trick that I've shown you before. And if you forgot it, it's just taking marker and you kind of outline or color with marker. And then you use just plain water. And um, all those Crayola markers and the Mr. Sketch smelly markers, they're all water-based markers. So the water will make it kind of spread out and bleed just like paint would. Okay. So we're going to let our dogs dry and then do our backgrounds. All right, so I added some clouds for my background and I'm gonna paint blue now that my doggie's dry. And Lucy, what are you gonna do for your background? Do like a mixing of colors. Kind of like a, she wants to do a, she told me a tie-dye-ish type background. What colors are you gonna use? Kind of like some cool colors. Cool colors, so remember those cool colors, blues and purples and maybe a little turquoise or something like that. Green. Green. All right, so. 
pick your background and what you want to paint for your background. Remember, if you want to add a pattern, you can add a pattern in. You just want to make it a solid color. You can do that. Um, it does not have to be realistic. If you went realistic with your dog, you can go imaginary colors and kind of do a fun background. It does not have to be um, a realistic background if you don't want it to be. If you're drawing your cat and you have like a special blanket or something that your pet sleeps on, um, you can certainly maybe do the pattern or color of that. Otherwise, just choose something fun that goes with what you like and the colors you like and create your background. And then once your background is done, you guys are done with this project. And if you want to um, let them dry before you kind of pick them up if you're using watercolors, if you use markers or colored pencils, they should be ready to go right away. And if you liked doing this one, you want to try another pet, or um, maybe you have a family member who has a special pet or animal in their life and you want to try drawing theirs, you could do that. Um, or if you just love cats and dogs and you don't have any at home, try picking out your favorite ones and drawing those. Pet portraits and pet... Um, Drawings and paintings are really fun to do. And the more you practice at drawing using those drawing guides, the better you'll get. Um, and the you'll see kind of the connection to how the head shape goes and everything. She's eating the paint. <laughs> so he's uh, admiring our paintings. All right, so we are not gonna pick them up because they're still a little wet and droopy, but see, ooh, there goes my puddle. But here are our paintings um, that we finished. And um, hopefully you guys had fun. Oh, we had to wake Sunny up. Hopefully you guys had fun doing this project. Um, I know I did and Lucy did. So mm -hmm. I want to see your cat or dog pictures and so does Sunny and Lucy. So if you want to send them to us, we would love to see them. Yeah. And um, you can email me. Mrs. Finglin at kfinglin at www.academy.org. And I would love to see the cat and dog pictures that you drew. And if you use paint or markers or what you guys use to color yours. And if you use real or imaginary colors, okay? All right, I will see you guys hopefully soon. Wildcat artists have a great rest of your day and enjoy your weekend. And goodbye from Sunny. Bye. Bye from Lucy. See you guys later.